If your doctor has recommended to you that you get a glucose meter so that you can start monitoring your blood sugars, you want to sit down and look at all the different options you have. It's kind of like going to get a car. There's a lot of different options. Um, you can either go online. There's a lot, of, a lot of advertisements there. Or you can go to your local pharmacy. The first thing that I would check is to make sure what kind of what which meter your insurance will cover. Uh, different insurance companies often make um, agreements with different meter companies and they will, uh, they'll have a certain one and that might limit your options, unless you want to pay out of pocket. You know, that's always an option. The meters are not very expensive, so I would be cautious in that you can always get a meter relatively inexpensively, but the strips are what's going to be the ongoing charge then. In fact, many companies will give their meter away, so then you, you kind of have to buy their strips, which is a, a good marketing tool, I think, but you need, do need to keep in mind that the strips will continue to be uh, a cost, an ongoing cost. So check with your insurance company to see what type of uh, strips and meter they would prefer you have. And if they don't have a preference, then the field is open. Go to the pharmacy, look at some of the different meters on the, on the shelf, have them show you how they work, have your healthcare professional, your local diabetes educator help you with that. And look for things like, how much blood does it take? Do you need a great big drop of blood, a smaller drop of blood? Many of the meter companies now are going to a very small drop of blood. Um, what, uh, how big are the numbers on the front? Can you read the numbers? You wanna be able to make sure that if you can, once you've checked your sugar, you know what your blood sugar is, that you can see it well enough. You wanna look at the size of the strips, do the, can you handle the strips well? Are they big enough for you to hold on to? Some of the kids can use the little bitty tiny ones because they've got a lot better dexterity and fine motor skills. For older people or for some men who have big, bigger fingers and hands or for people who might have some neuropathy problems where they can't quite feel properly, they might want to look for some of the larger strips. You want to look at what kind of lancing device do you use with that meter. You want to uh, see what kind of lancets fit in it. That's another ongoing cost because you'll need to have some means of, of obtaining the drop of blood, be it that you prick your finger, prick your arm, prick the, the palm of your hand, some people, uh, I've, people prick their thighs. So there's a number of different places that you can get the blood sample from. Um, also look at um, some options, how it might be, how durable it is. If you have a teenage boy that needs a meter, you might need one that's a little more durable if he's going to be like throwing it in his backpack and carrying it around as opposed to your elderly mother who's going to have it sitting in a special place on the counter every day and keeps it in her little in the little zipped up bag. So just look at all the different things. See what bells and whistles it has on it. Um, do you need one that will alarm you when it's time to take your medications? Do you want one that graphs it out for you? Do you want downloading capabilities? A lot of the different meters have a, you'll be able to get a cable and you can dump that information then into your computer, which can graph it for you. It can compare weekends to weekdays, mornings to nights, and that way you can get a real good picture of what's going on, which, because the more information you get from this meter, the better you are able to take care of your diabetes diabetes and make decisions then about how uh, your medication should be working and about the foods that you're taking in, how it's affecting your diabetes.